Hey there, everybody. Hello and welcome to Relax Mail. All right, so last week we talked about what abundant mindset is. Today, we're going to talk about scarcity mindset and why it's not so it's such a good thing to actually have. So we're going to talk about that this week on Relaxed Mail. Hey there, everybody. Hello and welcome to Relaxed Mail. All right. Growing up as a little kid, um, I had watched many a video, many a movie, many a television show where the hero was running along and found quicksand. Now, I always feared that there was, you know, I'd be running into quicksand a whole lot more than what I actually do. Um, and come to find out, we actually do run into quicksand. Uh, we get ourselves mired into some really murky, miry, sticky situations. And it's all because of how we approach an, an issue, approach a problem, approach our daily life. Say you have a bill. That, that is due. You've got your bills, you laid all, all the, uh, your money out and then you've laid all your bills out and you decide to start allocating, you know, dollar for dollar, play, uh, uh, cent for cent for each, uh, each bill and what happens? More often than not, you don't have quite enough money, do you? Well, what do you start thinking of? Well, how am I going to, who's going to go without? Am I, I guess I'm not going to be able to have eat as good a sub meal as I want to because I'm going to have to give more money to the electric company. Um, there are those types of things uh, right there. Those That is a scarcity mindset. And that's actually what I want to talk to you about. That is the quicksand that you and me uh, experience in a whole, in, in so many different ways. And uh, we don't even realize we're actually burrowing ourselves down and actually getting ourselves choked out. Look at... Um, a great example is um, you take someone who lives in a poor section of town. Um, say you, you've got uh, you've got a family, and you decide, hey, I've got I'm going to do something really good for them. I'm just going to take them and I'm going to put them over on the nice side of town. You can take that family and move it over and give them a give them a house. All right give them a place to stay they don't even uh rent free they don't have to don't have to worry about it you take you're taking care of all of it now are you really actually making this person giving this person a better chance you would think yeah yeah they've got a better chance they're seeing how is the much nicer it is to to live when in reality they're not they're still mired in a scarcity mindset they still think uh in the terms of haves having and ha not having um, and that's a very horrible and, and sad way to look at life as uh, well I've uh, this person has something this person doesn't because what as Jim Rohn says you are the average of the five people five closest people that you spend most time with um, and it's been, I've changed it around a bit to where you are the average of the five people you spend the most intentional time with. Actually, I believe uh, Ray Edwards is the first person I heard saying saying it like that, and that just that fits a lot better. And so that's why I've changed it over to that. Um, if you these people uh, say the the. Uh, the poor family that you took out uh, from the poor, wrong side of the tracks and you brought them over onto the good side of the tracks, what's going to happen? Well, they're going to be happy, obviously. They're, they've got a nicer house. It may be bigger. It may have a room for all the kids instead of having, you know, four of them living in one, one room and, you know, and mom and dad in another. But the issue that they, they still approach life with the mindset of what do I have to do without? 
who's going to have to go go without who's um, what's got to be sacrificed who's taking advantage of who and because they live in a nicer part of town all of a sudden they've got their friends who are coming over who also have that not so good uh, impression and poor people and I'm using it as poor people because I'm honestly I can't think of a better word to use other than people who are broke not broken people but people who are broke um, they they attract the the whole they attract the whole scarcity mindset because they think they fear the lack of money they fear money they see money as being a, a bad uh, bad thing as the root of all evil is what they've always been misquoted um, and yes it has been misquoted but you take the uh, take the poor people out of the poor neighborhood you bring them into the good uh, into a nice neighborhood what ends up happening is they want to help they see themselves as hey I've got a leg up let's help other people and so they without bringing without realizing that they don't have uh, haven't changed their mindset and their mindset and the people that they bring over and they're trying to help don't have bring in the mindset all of a sudden they start bringing you know a couple of cousins over, uh, you know, their best friend from high schools uh, who's been couch surfing moves over. He's got a car that he's been working on, and so he has it towed over, and it's now sitting in front of the front yard. They don't have the mindset to set aside money to take care of the outside of the house, so all of a sudden the outside of the house starts to look kind of, kind of crumbly. It's the worst-looking house in the block. Um, it brings down the property values because the, the people who are in this well-to-do neighborhood care about what their investment is the poor folk who have been moved who moved into this particular house don't have a uh, don't have that mindset they don't care about the investment because they actually haven't invested anything in it and so they start bringing uh, bringing other people who don't have any investments in it to their house and it brings that value down back down to what they deem they're worthy of they're valued as and and doing so it brings down the rest of the houses so the property values fall down and so all of a sudden that nice neighborhood becomes kind of a little bit shady neighborhood and from a little bit shady neighborhood it uh, continues to grow until it becomes a, uh, a crappy neighborhood now you may want to take this whole story and go well see look at that you want to keep the rich and the poor separate no <laughs> far from it Actually, what I would want to do is I want to be able to show and teach uh, people who have a scarcity mindset that that scarcity mindset is a wrong way to think. You can have a poor person become a rich person and be very proud and very helpful to the community being wealthy without, you know, and but instead of sacrificing wealth, they're able to build wealth to help people. And that whole line of thinking is an abundant mindset. If they can bring up a, a, if they can bring themselves up, move into a very nice neighborhood, take the money that they have started earning and building and making, then they can actually take that, uh, take the money that they make, and be able to help educate more people that hey, a scarcity mindset is a really bad mindset. You want to start looking at it in this form and that's a lot of the reasons why people who uh, all of a sudden become wealthy and they they're always afraid that they're going to lose their friends well you go you're, you are you're going to lose your friends why because your friends if you have started if you've come into money and because you've made it you've made that money your friends who aren't making that money are one going to look at you with a scarcity mindset of well it must be nice well it must be awesome to have a a, a, a way to look at your uh it must be nice being able to go take a trip to uh to the grand canyon whenever you want it must be nice to be able to you know go to uh go see uh, a play at new york city it must be nice to blank and you know what the answer is yes i worked very hard for this so i deserve that very nice thing 
but your attitude towards money is also going to change and that's going to drive people with a scarcity mindset away from you because you're on a different level than what the, the when you have an abundant mindset you're going to approach you're going to look at the same thing and you can see this is where an apple and an orange become the same character because they may you you know you say they say you can't you can't judge uh, it's like judging apples to oranges well if you look at something and you see an orange and the other person looks at it and sees an apple are they not apples and oranges it may be the very same thing it may be a potato but if you look at it and you see the possibility of an orange and your your friend who is still in, uh, who still has a scarcity mindset looks at it and still sees an apple well then it's a they're not it's the same thing you're just not on the same level so it's I don't know if that's a very good example or not but that's what I've got in my mind at the moment because they're not you can't you can explain and you can help educate a person who happens to have a scarcity mindset you can educate them go no 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 see this is the the, the money that you're you're thinking we're losing here is actually being applied to making more money through here and so instead of saying well it must, how do you spend that type of money well I know I have to spend money in a very responsible way while well, the 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 broke person uh, it looks at uh, money and wants to hoard it so what now that I've gone through and I've made a whole big long bit about this and uh, what is scarcity mindset because hello aunt goodbye aunt so what is it about the scarcity mindset well the scarcity mindset as I mentioned before it keeps you broke you're always worrying about small parts there's a lot of examples out there these days as to what scarcity mindset is look go to a college campus so yes I am gonna rag on uh, college campuses right now because college campuses have got a lot of a lot of too too many kids and um, and but it is a perfect example of what scarcity mindset is you have a lot of teachers there who have scarcity mindset why do you think they charge you know a hundred and fifty dollars for a single book that they wrote because that book's not going to be bought by anybody else. It is they they had it written, they had it published for their soul uh, for their soul want. Um, they didn't write it for you know to be widely uh, consumed, but they want to be able to make money off of it as if they were you know a published author. But the people in uh, in the, the teachers and professors in a college often have a scarcity mindset. Because of it, look at how uh, when the students don't get their way uh, these days. If all of a sudden you've got one who, there's a speaker who they don't agree with, all of a sudden you get a whole group of them wailing and, and rioting. Well, I think Lubbock... Uh, uh, Texas Tech here recently had a good example of that. Whenever they won a, uh, a, a, a uh, won the championship, uh, basketball I believe is what it was, basketball championship, they rioted of all things. They they tore stuff up. They I think they lit a couple cars on fire. I mean, hello. There's if that's not a, an example of of scarcity, all right. But where do they riot? They don't. They riot in their neighborhood. Their neighborhood's struggling as it is, and yet, what do they do? They tear up their stuff. There is a beautiful example of scarcity mindset just right there. Another example is today's uh, millennials. What is the biggest medical issue they have these days? It's anxiety. You, everybody seems to have some type of anxiety. It's an anxiety attack. They're, they're anxious. They're, they're having anxiety attacks. Well, okay. There's a reason why they're having anxiety attacks. And it's not mental health because it's, 
there's uh, there may be issues mental health wise yeah there may be a couple people who have some type of disorder some type of you know some type of problem that needs professional help but to ha all of a sudden out of nowhere have anxiety that has become the you know, the new uh, the new allergy the in allergy last uh, last decade it was uh, it was gluten and or beginning of this decade it was gluten and now it's uh, now that we're at the end it's become anxiety um, the uh, before that you know you had your nut allergies and from that it was peanuts and before that it was milk and you know it's just kind of the in uh, there's an in allergy that people seem to like to have who and these people often have a scarcity mindset there's that mind the hive mind that group think that kicks in it's like oh well I, I've got to, that's that's my problem they're focusing on the problem a scarcity mindset helps people to not get out of their problems but just to focus on their problem oh well I've got uh, I've got a big gut it must be because I eat wheat no it's not because you eat wheat it's because you eat too much wheat and you don't do other things there's a look at the big picture why are you emotionally eating emotionally a lot of times you'll also see substance abuse issues in again the on the poor side of town I'm not saying that the rich people don't buffer also and abuse alcohol abuse drugs also but the poor people you often see the poor people also have abusive uh, abuse and buffer with uh, alcohol or drugs or both that is also where an abundant uh, abundant mindset would actually remove that whole, that issue from the uh, from the equation while a scarcity mindset exacerbates people with a scarcity mindset often look at a problem and they look at it very in a very ma uh, macro way they think small it's just what can I do just to get out of this one particular problem right now instead of looking at well how can I get myself how can I this I take this problem and turn it into a success it's how do I just get out of this hole instead of going well I wonder if what uh, wonder why this hole is here what is what caused this hole what and, and instead of worrying about you know how am I going to get up and out it's you know you might see that uh, this is a uh, the this hole that you found yourself in might be the indicator of, of a bigger problem say you're standing in a in a crevice that is you know about this wide well it could just be that there's a wash out there or it could be that you're standing on a side of a uh, uh, of a piece of, of land that is about to give way so instead of you know worrying about how to get out uh, just worrying about get out of the out of the way uh, out of the hole you're ha instead of stepping back and going well there's this this big old crevice is here because there's something else that's causing the problem you could call if you could fix that causing problem you can make it a lot easier to get out of the hole another indicator that you have a scarcity mindset is what happens when a problem arrives do you react or do you respond now there's two different there's a difference between the area the best way to look at it is when you are given a, a shot and you break out in a big old rash what does the doctor say he says you have a reaction reaction is a, is a negative thing that happens to you to in your body in response to uh, something being uh, uh, reacts to, uh, to medicine being introduced into your body while if you uh, are given medicine and you start getting better the doctor often says he's responding to treatment so there is a difference your reaction is a bad negative thing it's usually an overdoing it's where you respond uh, where an event happens and your response is to go off the deep end it's a knee-jerk reaction is a, uh, another way to say it all of a sudden instead of uh, you know you see junior draw the uh, a uh, the Mona Lisa on the wall of crayons you may 
Oh my God, he's drawn all those on the wall, and oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to paint over that, and yada yada yada. Instead of, and you completely miss the fact that he just reproduced the Mona Lisa perfectly with crayon on a wall. So you could be, you could see the big picture. That's a Mona Lisa drawn in crayon on a wall, done by a five-year-old. Or you could just be, oh my God, there's crayon on the wall. What am I going to do? If you react, you're not going to see the Mona Lisa. If you respond, you may go, oh, 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 hey, that's a really good Mona Lisa. It scares the mentality if you see that you're reacting to stuff and you're, oh my God, oh, and you're going with everybody else and you're just, you're flying off the handle. You're, you're getting angry for whatever reason you think you're, you're worthy of getting angry for. That's a good sign you've got a scarcity mindset. Another example of a scarcity mindset is when you see something happen, you see, you get a, you're in a new situation. Say all of a sudden, uh, you got fired from your job and you can't seem to find another one. A scarcity my, a person, my, a person with a scarcity mindset views that situation as being permanent. Instead of, ah, well, I'll have to, I'm going to have to be down here uh, on a lower rung for for a couple for a couple months until I can get enough uh, enough something or another going so that I can get myself back up. A, an abundant person sees a situation as just being temporary. They don't fear change, while a a, a scarcity minded person fears change, sees change as a problem, and is got to find a way of getting over or getting past it. A scarcity minded person will look at a problem and see that it is a that's the current situation and it's permanent it's fixed in stone that's going to how their life's going to be from now on while an abundant person sees that as just a temporary uh, temporary inconvenience at at the work they a, a, a scarcity a person with a scarcity mindset will actually fret and worry over the stuff that they have no power uh, no power controlling so how are you going to stop this river well, you can't stop the river. If the river's gonna rise, the river's gonna rise. You can make adjustments to mitigate the damage, but you're not going to keep the, you're not gonna stop the river from rising. You have no power over that river. So a scarcity minded person sees the river's going to rise and it's like, oh, well, that's my, that's, there it goes. My, my house is gone. My, I, everything else is gone because the river is going to rise up and it's going to wash it away. While a an abundant-minded person sees that as, well, I wanted my house moved anyhow. <laughs> uh, but they see they they'll look at a at a pro problem, and it's not a permanent uh, change. It's not a permanent uh, uh, occurrence. An abundant person, it's temporary, it may only last a little while, it's gonna only last a little while, and it'll get better. One of the items that m points out a scarcity-minded uh, scarcity person, the biggest is, how freely do they give? Um, if, you have, if you have a boss, who, uh, or a team member, let's, let's start out with a team member. You got a team member. Y'all got a, a brainstorming session where you're trying to figure out how to how to fit together and make this new prototype of a you know of a widget. Well, a scarcity minded person may have a great idea, but they're gonna if they f see that their idea is just gonna be taken, put into the uh, into the mix and changed around and melded and ch and and morphed into whatever the final product becomes. They're going to see that as, hey, I'm not getting any credit for what I'm doing. Why do I want to give them my best idea? Okay? That's a lot of scarcity mindset right in that uh, example, in that, uh, in that example uh, by itself. Because one, they, they're not going to give because they think that their mind just came up with the one and only thought they're ever going to have in their life. They don't share. They don't give. They don't, they're, that my, that... I'm not going to be able to uh, come up with something as awesome as that idea 
and so they don't share and don't give that information freely. When a poor person or a scarcity minded person, uh, they may give a couple dollars. While an abundant uh, person with an abundant mindset has no problem, you know, writing out a $300 check to give to a charity. Yeah, you may, I've, I've, I work with the charity and there, it, there's times that I have the scarcity mindset with money and I'm still working on it. But, and I see that these people fork out, you know, $1,500 at an auction and it's like, wow, that must be nice to have that kind of money. Well, yeah, they have that kind of money. And the reason why they have that kind of money is because they give it. Which, for a, for a scarcity-minded person, is very, very counterproductive. Now, another example is of a person who uh, scare, has scarcity mindset is, they over, is somebody who overindulges. All right? I, I suffer from this problem myself uh, when it comes to uh, it comes to food and my weight. Uh, I drive a truck for the, uh, during the day at the moment, and when I get the call that hey it's time for me to I'm going to be taken off uh, you know first thing in the morning or sometimes it's even hey I'm going to be taken off at about eight or nine eight or nine o'clock at night, and it's time to eat. I'll eat until I'm stuffed. So I am miserable because I've got food in the truck, but I don't feel like I'm going to be able to eat well while I'm in the uh, while I'm out uh, out on uh, uh, on a job. That problem is a scarcity mindset. I eat just fine. I eat twice a day most of the time, and I get plenty of uh, fluids. I drink a lot of water. I drink some cokes from time to time. I've always got food going into my mouth even while I'm driving around and I might even have a you know a, a gone and bought groceries so I may have chips and crackers and everything else but uh, there at first driving down the road and I'm miserable and I still end up some for some reason opening up a bag and I overindulge and so by the time the job's over I'm already almost out of, out of food I've uh, I've eaten way too much and that's a scarcity mindset I have on food. So yes, scarcity mindset is not just money. It's on food. It's on uh, your uh, your situation. It's, there's so much around. There's so much around that tells you that hey, I have, don't have enough. And that's where you get yourself into problems. That's why a lot of people who um, who are overweight have such the problem is because they have a scarcity mindset on food. They they see uh, they see that their current situation is is permanent, so they eat to to make them uh, to make themselves feel better. And they make themselves feel better. They fill themselves up, and they feel miserable. But it numbed the uh, the emotions that they were feeling. Whatever what emotion that they're uh, they're wanting sedated, I overeat because I have a scarcity mindset and that I'm fear that I'm not ever going to get out of the truck. When in all reality, I know I'm getting out of the truck. I'm not going to be working in a truck for the rest of my life. Though there are times that I really feel like I, that's all I'm going to be. All I'm going to be is a dang gun tr truck driver hauling sand from place A to place B. When in reality, no, it's not. It's a very, it's a temporary, it's an extended temporary, but it's a temporary gig to a larger, to a larger celebration. Uh, look at people who have a broke mentality, broke person's mindset, a scarcity mindset, when they win the lottery or receive a big inheritance. Um, that broke mentality, broke person's mentality, causes you to self-sabotage, causes you to go, oh, well, I'm not worth this, you know, two million dollars, if that's what they received. I'm not worth that that amount, and so within a year, you would think it's impossible. But somehow they have blown all that two million dollars, and they are in this back in the same hole, if not in a worse hole than they were before, because they don't think they didn't think they were worth that. That's the 
broke the the scarcity mindset keeps you in that same economic bracket it keeps you broke it scarcity mindset keeps you in the same spot that you're at keeps you in the same weight class as uh, as everybody else so it's your uh, you want to make sure that you have you get rid of the scarcity mindset now you can hear yourself if you pay attention you will hear what you say you will hear the words that are coming out of your own mouth and they'll alert you to hey I've got a scarcity mindset you hear things like I can't anything I can't do this it's a blocking statement I've talked about blocking statements before I can't because I don't know how I can't because I'm not smart enough I can't because I can't and that's just that's there to keep you safe that's your your mind going you don't want to do this because you're going to get uncomfortable well you uh, the human condition is meant to be uncomfortable we're going to be talking about that in a couple weeks down the road is why you want to become dis, uh, become uncomfortable a couple times during the week another example is i don't have I don't have time, I don't have the money, I don't have the patience. You've got just as much patience as the next person. You've got just as much money as the next person. A good example is that there's a, um, an affirmation that I use. The affirmation that I use is, I have plenty of money for everything that I truly want. Don't believe me? All right. Best example was whenever I smoked cigarettes. I may be broke, we may be down to ramen noodles. But I can tell you, I found the $3 or whatever it was at that time to buy a pack of cigarettes. When, that was, when I was out of cigarettes, by George, I found the money. If I had to walk up and down the street and, and check, uh, uh, check phone, uh, the, the, the change returns on phones. And yes, we did have, still had uh, uh, public phones then. Pay phones. These, that's a mindset. I, oh, I was, you, you, if you don't think you have the money, that's what you're lying to yourself. You have the money. If your child needed $10,000 for an operation, guess what? You would find that $10,000. You would literally beg, borrow, and steal. <clears throat> Maybe not steal, but you would beg, you would borrow, and you would probably sell your car. You would give stuff up to be able to help your child. When you do that, that's actually a little bit of abundant mindset kicking in. But you got to remember, people have are, are influenced by two things. You got the pleasure, you got your pain. All, if that pain becomes enough, it becomes a really good motivator. And it's actually, people become motivated by pain a lot easier than they do by, by pleasure. But if you can look at and find out how to say, all right, well, I'm going to do this because it makes my wife smile and I love to see my wife smile. The pleasure of the, that you're giving your wife, you can use that as, a, uh, as a, uh, an incredible motivator to get stuff done. Another example, uh, another phrase that you will hear if you're using a scarcity mindset is, well, I'm going to have to do without this. I'm going to have to do without that. No, you find, instead of worrying about what you're going to be doing without, how can you make enough money because believe it or not despite what so many people want to t uh, tell you about unlike what a lot of people of a scarcity mindset want you to think money is not just this giant pie and you get just a little bitty sliver of slice because you hear that you know the top one percent uh controls you know you know what is it like 95 percent of the uh of the world's money no they don't because if that was the case, then why are there 100,000 new millionaires being created each year? Are they schmoozing up to the top 1%? No, because money is made. You make money, and that's a big change. If you want to start working your way to changing your mindset on money, start talking about how you're making money, not earning money. So money is not... A finite resource it is unlimited you make money so keep making money start telling yourself you're gonna make money you're gonna get start making money get I earn money out of it I earn that 
Okay, you may have earned it, doesn't mean you're going to get it. But if you make it, you've made that money, that's your money. You've made it, it's, it's there. Make sure you're, you're changing your vocabulary as you're changing, uh, changing your mindset. All right, so there you go. That is scarcity mindset in a very big shell. So uh, next week, I'm going to talk about how to take your abundance mindset and turn it into, or a scarcity mindset, and turn it into an abundant mindset. Um, and so, uh, till next week then, if you've liked this uh, channel, then click the uh, subscribe button. If you like this video, at least give me a thumbs up. And then if you really, really, really like this channel, go ahead and mash that, uh, that bell icon, and you'll be notified every time I put out a new video. Which I'm still, I'm aiming for every, every Friday, but as you can tell, it doesn't always happen. But, hey, I'm, I'm doing what I can, when I can, and how I can. So, all right, folks, y'all take care. Love you lots. Be creative, and we'll talk to you next week.